talked about the three things that cause illness. Fungus is number one, low body temperature is number two, and bad teeth like root canals is number three. So we're going to talk about fungus today. Fungus, what is fungus? It's a single cell organism that um, is a parasite to the body. Um, in the digestive tract, it forms of a function. The, body, the digestive tract uh, utilizes the fungus to help its process of digesting foods and making chemicals and things of that nature. And as long as in the digestive tract, it's controllable. But because of antibiotics and steroids, which damage the lining, when we're born, we're born with uh, seven layers of probiotics. And these layers are like a filtering system, allowing um, minerals and amino acids to filter through the walls into the bloodstream so the body can utilize those things to make chemicals and have us build tissue and move forward. But if these lining get damaged from antibiotics, which are wide spectrum, they kill a lot of probiotics and they kill a lot of bad guys, but if they kill the lining and you have seven layers and you kill it enough, now the fungus gets close enough to the wall that it can eat its way through the wall into the bloodstream. Now it proliferates throughout your whole system. If it proliferates, it's going to start it eating up your nutrition. So the main thing that fungus eat is carbohydrates, trace minerals, and B complex. Those are the three. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about carbohydrates. So what is the number one organ in the body that is a carbohydrate fiend? It is the brain. It eats something like 50 to 70% of all carbohydrates we ingest. It just gobbles that up like crazy. Problem is, if the fungus likes it and it starts eating up your carbohydrates, and the brain's not getting what it needs, it's going to make you crave food. It's going to make you crave carbohydrates. So you're driving down the street, and all of a, see, all of a sudden, out of the peripheral vision, you see uh, you know, a um, Winchell's Donuts. You're going to be directed to that because the brain says, I want to get fed. I'm not getting what it needs. You go over and have a donut, and the carbs aren't like bad for you. I mean, you know, in excess, they can be, can store fat and things of that nature. But the problem is you end up getting fats and proteins in the, in the donut that you don't need. And it's a simple carb and it makes you spike insulin, which is the number one cause of illness. And the number two cause of brain damage is excess insulin. So you end up spiking insulin causing damage, causing blood sugar problems, and you end up not needing and storing the fats and protein that comes with the donut, which ends up storing in your gut and things as a reserve that the body didn't need. So that's one thing about carbs and dealing with fungus. It makes you crave. Second thing is trace minerals, which is much more important. Trace minerals produce chemicals in the body that we need to have proper brain function, cell function, um, everything you can imagine needs trace minerals to have that occur. If you end up not getting enough trace minerals, you start to go acidic because trace minerals bond to amino acids to make these chemicals and they take in the bloodstream, they take the amino acid, which is an acid bond with a mineral makes you either an alkaline or a neutral chemical which balances the pH. The body has to stay in a pH range of 7.38 to 7.42. That's 7.38 to 7.42. This really tight range. If it gets out of that range for one degree in either direction for a full hour, the likelihood you're dead. You ever seen a fruit that looked healthy the night before and the next day it kind of collapsed because the food, the structure of the membranes of that food got out of the pH range and they collapsed. So this is what happens to the body. So the body has this range to stay in and it stays in this range in the blood um, 
by keeping minerals available to it. When it becomes low and it starts to go acidic, the brain goes, whoa, we have to handle this problem. Let's start leaching calcium out of the bones to make calcium bicarbonate, which is similar to sodium bicarbonate, carbon, excuse me, sodium bicarbonate, which normalizes and balances out acid so it neutralizes it. So it's like, you know, when you pour um, it on battery cables, it sizzles, that's neutralizing the acid. So sodium bicarbonate is neutralizing uh, acid. In the body, it uses calcium bicarbonate to neutralize the acid. So that's fine and dandy. It neutralizes, it stays in the pH range, the body's not gonna die. Problem is, it's a weak chemical. Calcium bicarbonate falls apart in your muscles and synovial fluid, forms what they call free-floating calcium, which ends up in your joints, like sand in your joints, causing inflammation and arthritis. It causes, um, with oils, causes plaque buildup. It goes through the kidneys, causing kidney stones and damage to the kidneys from filtrating and, and taking away the bicarbonate in, in the kidneys. So we've got all these free radical damage occurring from excess calcium. So what do we do about that? We need to become alkaline. That means we have to eat foods um, that have a lot of minerals in it. And um, we need to balance out the pH in our blood so it stays where it needs to be without pulling calcium out of the bones, which we're having tremendous problems with um, osteoporosis, um, weak bones, cancer in the bone has gone prolific, you know, across the board in regards to how many people have been getting bone cancer. And with all the damage that occurs to the body, the body's always fighting it. The last ditch effort of the body to become alkaline is ammonia. Have you ever gone to an old folks home? It sounds like it's, or it smells like they, they've just urinated in their pants, but it's coming out of their breath and their urine and their skin. And, and they, it, it's putrid smelling. Uh, if you go into a cancer ward, it's worse because they've got chemicals that they're introducing to this uh, ammonia and it, it smells what they call the, the smell of death. So now we've talked about that fungus uh, eats up all your trace minerals. It uh, makes you go acidic. Uh, it, it, it causes you to pull calcium out of the bones to make calcium bicarbonate. But now we're just getting to the other aspects. Where does it proliferate? Proliferates in the gallbladder, sinus and lower colon. So let's talk about the gallbladder. Gallbladder gets clogged up with fungus. It actually, stock, uh, it's like a backup, it's like a webbing that inhibits the flow of bile, which digests fats, which make cholesterol, which makes pregnenolone, which feeds the adrenals to make estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So there's an aspect of lowering, or a big aspect of lowering your hormone levels. This is where it backs up into the liver, reassimilate the, the bile, causing the liver ducts to get used cholesterol like a waxy material built up, which inhibits it from cleansing the blood and do, making chemicals properly, causing the kidneys to have an excess of waste material coming through it, causing the kidneys to be overwhelmed, causing it to throw off the skin, causing eczema and psoriasis and other skin problems, all because of fungus clogging it up. It proliferates in the sinus cavity, which causes huge people a huge amount of problems. Uh, and I believe almost everybody has a sinus problem they don't even know they're aware of. But they just proved that there's a, a weakened area in the blood-brain barrier right at the forehead near the sinus area that can be damaged and you can get fungus into the brain from this area. Um, you get fungus into your ear. You know, my son, um, he used to have ear infections from swimming and I told him 
It's an internal problem aggravated by an external problem. So I, I made a nasal product and it cleaned up his inner and his exter went away. So we got a lot of problems with nasal problems that have an infection that the body hasn't been able to deal with. Any kind of cavity is hard for the immune system, gallbladder, uh, sinus, lower colon, or cavities that the immune system has trouble with um, to eliminate uh, infection. So if you look at the sinus cavities, you have an infection that you don't even know about and it's dripping down your throat every night and you're getting congestion down here, you're getting in your lungs that causing uh, irritation and eventually irritation can cause damage and can cause long-term damage. Inflammation is what causes cancer, constant inflammation. So we're having a lot more throat cancers and lung cancers and things of that nature caused from inflammation, caused from a fungal infection that caused the problem to start with. Lower colon, you're getting, uh, it weakens uh, some of the membranes. Eventually um, in the blood vessels, you can have hemorrhoids. Um, you can have an incubation center of, of normally in the lower colon, we have probiotics that make be complex and things of that nature to make us function properly. But when you proliferate fungus in that area, we eliminate proper bee complex and things of that nature. And so we have tremendous colon cancer, um, rectal cancer, I, my, my soon to be um, um, brother-in-law has a huge tumor in his lower colon, all because I believe of fungus. Anyway, now you got an idea why it's so important to deal with fungus and what it causes.